putting the mmm in summer. Mmm. Hellman's sponsors this morning food. Well, she's become known as the Potato Queen to her millions of social media followers, and today Poppy O'Toole is back in our kitchen to share more spud secrets. Um, uh, th this is uh, incredible. It is a proper masterclass. I've already just tasted the, you know, what people would say was yep. ordinary mashed potato. Like, tastes so brilliant. I'm just happy you dug in straight away. We were just straight into it. I was like, yes, and you enjoy it, so I'm happy. I'm Let's all go. Really good. So I'm just going to go through a few tips on how to... Like, everyone knows how to make mash. It's a lovely, simple thing to make, but... Oh, my God, I'm right there with you. <laughs> a few it's just ways. amazing. Why never taste Why like is that? that just a side <laughs> dish? It should be the main event. It should be the main event, like exactly. That. So, first oh tip is I like to cut my potatoes into, uh, like, one centimetre round mm, sort okay. of thing. That means that the water can penetrate more quickly rather than the cubes, otherwise it's a bit of like an oh. uneven surface area. And these are Maris Piper potatoes. Maris Pipers all the way for mash. They've got a really high starch content and that's what gives it that fluffiness. So, that's tip number one. That goes into heavily salted cold water and you bring it to the boil and you're going to boil them for around 15 minutes, 20 minutes. So it's important for them to be in there when you're raising the temperature. Yes, the so boil. anything that's grown under the ground needs to go into cold water and brought up. Anything that's grown over the ground, you can boil in hot water. Well, I've never heard that. That's one. Yeah, life. there you go. So once you have boiled them and they're ready, you can then just pour them into a colander. And I like to steam dry them. So I leave a little bit of the hot water underneath, mm -hmm. tea towel over, and leave them for about 10 minutes. And then you can see they get like these white edges. Fluffy. Super fluffy. And that is perfect. Now, the tip with this is, instead of using a masher, like we're so used to, which can kind of like separate mm. the starch particles, it can get really scientific, like, but... I'm not that clever. Um, so what I like to use is a sieve, if you have one at home. Most people have a sieve, which is super easy. And you can just push them through with the back of your spoon, or if you're really classy, you can use a ricer. So that is going to banish any lumps. There'll banish be no lumps. lumpy mash And whilst I push it again. through, that butteriness comes from putting butter in there at the same time, and that coats all the starchy bits, and it just soothes into it. Whilst this is happening... Mm. Yeah. That's going to got... take quite a while to push it through a sieve, You can it? use a bit of a bigger sieve. This is very fine. Right. It's completely dependent on you. It, when I was in kitchens, you use a drum sieve, and it's this big, round thing, and you, like, push it through with a, a bread scraper and stuff, and it's much oh, quicker. Right. But it does take a bit more time. But if your potatoes are cooked well, yep. you can it see they're already just through. coming okay. through. Uh, so once you have that... I have also got some warm milk or cream, whatever you want to use. See, my mother-in-law taught me about the warm milk yes. cream thing, and I'd never done that before. Oh, so this is, the, this is a proper game-changer, because you want it to be the same temperature as the potatoes or hotter, because then it absorbs qu more quickly, and it doesn't mean... The more you stir this now, like any starch, like bread or anything like that, the more you stir it, the more glutinous it's going to get. Uh -huh. ah. So you want to get just what you want in, a bit of butter in there as well, and all your seasonings and then you just stir it until it comes together. And that oh, is God. your simple, delicious, plain, everyday mash. And that's just a few tips just to elevate it to a, to possibly even better, that's depending so on how you make it. Already two great tips there, two or three great exactly. tips. Exactly. Now... Okay, so what do you do with it? We go on to flavours. So once you've got your base of mash, mm. um, I like to add different flavours to it, which mm -hmm. just changes it. So the one you're digging into now yep. is a bacon, cheese and sour cream, which is a little bit like, you know, like a jack... Not, um, what are they called? Potato skin. Yeah, it's like a good bit. Potatoes. Yeah, exactly, the good <laughs> bit. so good. So, you get your mash, we've got some cheese, you just mix that through. I've got some uh, red Leicester or double Gloucester, the kind of, you know, the orangey one. Yeah. Bit of mozzarella, bit of cheddar. Sour cream is a game-changer in mash as well. Mm. It has got this lovely little, like, tartiness to it, which is lovely. Good bit of butter, and you mix that all together, and you can leave this... If you want to, you can put it in your tray and then you can heat it up later when you want to use it. You can put it back into the oven. And, and that just melts all the lovely melts cheese all in the cheese well. in together, mm. yes. And then all I want to do is get some bacon lardons that I've just fried separately, put the fat into it as well, out of your pan. Oh, yeah. And Don't then waste just sprinkle. Any of that. No, no, no. And then just sprinkle, sprinkle. And this is just another way to like elevate a nice little side dish. Lovely with a bit of steak. Or we have a honey mustard. Bit rogue, but it is delicious. It so is we've really got nice. whole grain mustard, cream, butter, cheddar. That all goes in, and mm. then season it up. Again, you can put that in the tray, and you can leave it for later when you want to heat it back up. Mm. And then all I do is get a bit of honey and whole grain mustard, heat it up in a pan, and just use it as a glaze. Oh, so you pour that over the top? Over oh, the top. And that gives a crunchy little 
crunchy little glaze on top and then you can put that back in the oven with a bit of cheese on there as so well. So can I just ask you a quick question? Sorry to go back to No, slightly, no, no. But the, with, with the... When you do this cheesy one, yes. are you going from that basic and then adding the cheese in? Yes. Or do you just mash and then add the cheese in? So I like to go from, from, from that. the basic. That's your yeah. basic. You can leave the cream or milk out if you want to and yeah. just do the butter because you're going to add a lot of dairy in. Uh, and that's completely preference. I like it full fat, full dairy, full if everything. you're going to do it. Yeah, I mean, if you're going like, to have it, you might as well it. go for it. And they're just really simple ways to make it a little bit more exciting. Just, you know. Beautifully done. I mean, it really is. And, and I've got to say, as Holly said, you know, that is the cent that could be the centre of it. Yeah. You know, put a little bit of broccoli on that and I'm done. I know. <laughs> and a little I bit know, of gravy exactly. or something. Yeah. 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 Be that. You don't feel um, like you're missing out on anything. No, I know. So exactly. good. This is really the lovely. Thank of you. potatoes. Thank you so much. No, really thank yummy. you very much. Right, delicious. for details of today's recipe and more delicious ideas from our chefs, download the free This Morning app. Right, so